Hey everybody, welcome to another Left Turn Workshop tutorial. Today we're going to be taking this character that we were working on uh, last time, creating this character in Daz 3D, uh, and we're going to bring it over into Reillusions Character Creator 4 in order to prepare it to become a character in an Unreal Engine 5 game. Alright, so uh, we got a lot of work to do actually in order to make this work. Uh, in the last video I showed you how to ex uh, set this up for export. Basically we got rid of the hair, we got rid of some of the shoes. Uh, but we're going to have quite a bit to do anyway in Character Creator. So let's uh, let's hop in and get to it. I have to warn you in advance, there's probably going to be a bit of nudity in this one. Uh, because we're going to be dealing with uh, skin tones and things like that. Sorry, them's the breaks, man. Alright, here we go. Uh, so here I am over in Character Creator 4. Uh, since this is a Daz character, I'm going to make use of Transformer to bring in a CC3 plus character. Okay. Um, so right now I need to select the FBX file that I have exported. All right. So that is the entropy to CC4.FBX. I'm going to open that. Okay, and in just a second, I should have my options for importing the character. Now, there are a couple different ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to go over the method that I like, and this is the method that I like because I have got the skin gen plugin. And uh, as a result, it makes matching the skin a little bit easier uh, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, let's take a look. Um, for that reason, I don't bake the body texture, which takes a long time, to be honest with you. Uh, it's one of the more intensive processes that you can ask CC4 to do, so I just skip it. Um, for all this stuff, I'm going to bring in my textures at 2048. Okay, so that's for the, uh, the dress, the gloves, the pants, and everything else. Um, I will be making that smaller okay and we will be uh, sort of combining a lot of these textures by the uh the end of the tutorial but uh starting at 2048 is a pretty nice trade-off between size and quality uh so that's what i'm going to do uh we always want to make sure that we've got our uh, asset types correct so the eyeglasses are accessories the pants are cloth the gloves are gloves and the dress is also cloth all right, and the layers are set up for us automatically. Now I'm going to click OK and wait for it to do its thing. Since I am not baking the body texture, this actually works pretty quickly. All of the morphs that we apply in Daz 3D will come through, but as you'll see, the skin tone will not. Okay, we're going to have to deal with the skin tone later. Okay, uh, not even later. Okay, we're going to have to deal with it right now. Um, so obviously we have an issue with the uh, materials for the glasses. Uh, for the moment, I'm actually just going to turn the glasses off, which I can do over here in the scene panel. Okay, just click that eyeball, turn off the glasses. That way I can concentrate on some of the other things that we need to do. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is actually put her into the Unreal Engine A pose. Okay, so I'm going to go over to content, animation, and down here we now will find this in the pose tab, calibration, Open A for UE4. Oops, and you got to make sure that you actually choose your character in the scene, not your eyeglasses. Okay, eyeglasses not going to get into this pose, but our character will. And there we have it. All right, so now that we're in the uh, the correct pose for uh, preparing the character for Unreal Engine, we are going to go ahead and fix some of the problems that we have. Number one of which is the eyes. Okay. When we close the eyes, as you can see right here, okay, look a little sleepy, uh, but those eyes are not fully closing. So we're going to go up to uh, character, correct eye blink, and there we go. Now the eyes are closing completely. However, the eyeball is poking through and giving us this really creepy spot right there in the middle. So in order to fix that, we're just going to go down to edit mesh going to go into the sculpting tab we're going to mirror and we're going to use this one right here which is the pull brush you can make that radius a bit smaller and by mirroring i just need to do one little click right there and now my eyes are fixed okay so there we go we got our eyeballs fixed 
Um, I am not going to add additional uh, eye elements like the tear ducts and everything else. Uh, the character is so stylized anyway that I don't think it's particularly worthwhile. Um, but you could if you wanted to. I am not going to do that. Alrighty, so next up, uh, if I look at the character, right, um, and particularly if I look down here, uh, sort of remove that dress, okay, you can kind of see there is detail here from the morphs that we created, but it's not showing up particularly well, and that is mostly because we don't have uh, normal maps. Um, associated with this uh, mesh now, okay? Uh, so what we're going to... There are normal maps associated with it, but not the musculature maps. Um, so in order to kind of make this a, a little more prominent, I'm going to go over into content. I'm going to go over into skin. Under skin, I'm going to look for normal effects, body, and because I have the realistic human skin pack, I'm going to go into uh, muscle, okay? And I am going to... Uh, double click on strong female medium. Okay, I could go heavy if I wanted to, but I think medium should do the trick pretty nicely. Okay, wait for a second for this to load up. Okay, and now, well, I don't know. I can't really move this around too well to uh, demonstrate exactly what's happened here without. Uh, yeah, I'm getting the old whammy for uh, for nudity, uh, but you got to take my word on it. It definitely constitutes an improvement and makes our character look a little more badass, which is uh, exactly what we're trying to do. Um, next up, however, we're going to want to adjust our skin tone. Okay, so if I look over here in the appearance editor, you'll see that uh, we have activated the editor and where we've activated the editor in order to apply this muscle uh, normal. Okay. We can, of course, make it a bit stronger by adjusting the strength. Okay. Of that normal map. Okay. So if we want things to pop a little bit more, just adjust the strength for that normal map in the body muscle. But once you're done and you want to start working on the skin tone, we're going to unclick activate editor. And it's going to basically bake out all of these textures, anything that we might have changed in the interim. Okay. And there we go. All right. So now we can look at our whole character again. Um, let's do the skin tones. To do the skin tones, I'm going to go over into the material settings. I'm going to go scroll down to where it says standard skin head. Okay. And I am going to scroll all the way down to skin color. We're going to activate skin color. And under this adjustment, we are going to click on activate. Now, remember, we're only working on the head here. That's why everything else is kind of freaked out a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to click on this auto color. Okay. <clears throat> and that's basically giving me sort of a, a natural look. And now I can use these different presets. If I want a very pale character, I could go with the white. Bring it up for uh, a little redder. And there we've got sort of the basis for darker skin. I'm going to go with this middle one here, this sort of yellowy flesh tone, and I am going to add a bit of black, okay, in order to get the character roughly in the same place that my Daz Studio character was, okay? Is it a perfect match? No. Could I bake those body textures? Yeah, I suppose I could, uh, but I am actually very happy... Uh, with the amount of control that I have over uh, the look of the character using skin gen. And I, I, I find that when I send things into Unreal, the, uh, the materials that I've created using skin gen tend to be a little bit better uh, than the materials that I get if I just bake textures off of Daz. Um, but there we go. All right, so skin tone is now more or less set up. Okay. Because uh, as you can see, these are all sort of linked to one another. And so the body and uh, the head and all these other pieces of the character have also uh, undergone the same change. And so our skin tone is consistent throughout. Okay. Um, this would probably be a good time to save my project. So I'm going to save this project as... I'm just going to call it entry. There we go. Okay. Click on save. Here we go. And we are good. All right, next up, uh, I do want to add a bit of makeup. So I'm going to go into my makeup settings. Okay, 
click down, full makeup, makeup and uh, special effects. And if I go down to party, I believe I have this Bollywood makeup, which uh, will give me a base that's very similar to what I was uh, creating in Daz. So I wanna make use of the Bollywood right here. I do want to keep the modified result uh, on the skin tones that I set up before. Demonetize, but alas, okay. So now we've got the, uh, what's it called? The uh, the face here is uh, is looking good. Uh, one thing I don't like particularly is actually the look of the lips. So I'm gonna go into lip, I want a darker lip. So instead of this red color, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag the color over toward the blues and the purples, okay? And make it sort of more of a purple, okay? Click on okay, and I am now good to go. I'm gonna undo the, uh, I'm gonna deactivate the editor, okay? Okay, and now I've got the character back uh, with all of the clothing added. All right. Um, next up, let me hit the hair really quickly. Okay, as I said before in the last video, the reason that I was using the the uh, Xenia hair was actually because it's very reminiscent of hair that I have uh, in my library here, which is uh, from Dorothy Jean Thompson. Um, she has a, uh, what is it, under realistic hair, cyber hair, and there are two female styles for this cyber hair, and this is, uh, both of these are basically kind of along the lines of what I am going for, okay, for the overall look. So, um, the character selected, I'm going to double click on the purple hair, okay, and I am now going to end up, hopefully, with a little bit of hair. Uh, the nice thing about using this hair is that uh, if we look over in the physics tab, okay, there is a, uh, a weight map has actually been generated for this hair already, okay? And so when I export this character to Unreal Engine, uh, when Unreal imports the character creator file is going to apply that weight map and I am going to uh, kind of by default have physics already applied to the hair so the hair will move around when the character is running and so that is uh, likewise big help okay so um, I've got the hair uh, another thing that uh, obviously I <laughs> although I like those shoes okay they're um, they just don't, they just didn't work. Um, they're just uh, too high poly, and I did not like the polygon reduction results. And um, yeah, unfortunately. So uh, I'm gonna go with like kind of a pair of Doc Martens. This is, uh, these are basically shoes that kind of come with uh, uh, character creator. So I'm just gonna go down to shoes, CC3, scroll down to the loose biker boots, double click on those, and now I've got some shoes, okay? So now she has got some shoes. And as you can see right there, the shoes are only about 3,000 uh, polygons, rather than 500,000, like uh, <laughs> for the others. So uh, we don't even need to uh, go ahead and do any kind of reduction on that. That is a very nice poly count, and uh, we should be very, very happy with it. So. Returning now to the hair though, okay, we could kind of see that up here we've got an issue because the uh, skull here is actually poking right through the hair, all right? And that is because uh, the morphology of the girl version 8 basically gives us a stylized head. Its proportions are a little bit off. And so what we want to do in order to make that work is just go ahead and select that hair. Uh, go into your Modify tab, Conform, and if you calculate Collision, bam, you've now got the hair. Now, there is this design that's cut out of the hair. We could go ahead and fix it. I'm not going to bother in this case. But basically, if you look over in your material and you go into your Scalp material, over here you've got this Opacity map, and the, uh, the Opacity map has got that design in black. And so anywhere there's black on this map you're not going to have hair. So uh, if you wanted to fix it up, you would just bring this over into Photoshop, 
And uh, after a couple of seconds with the clone tool, uh, you could basically get rid of that and have it looking uh, perfectly normal, natural, and lovely. Okay, so uh, there you go. We've now got the hair, okay? We've got the dress, we've got the um, leggings here, we've got the shoes, and we've got the gloves. Now, one issue that we definitely have with all of this, okay, is that the, the metals here look god-awful. Why is that? Well, let's start taking a look at the materials for some of our cloth, all right? And I'm going to start with the gloves, okay, because we've got a couple issues with the gloves. So I'm going to select the dark mist gloves. First thing that you can see is that we're getting a little bit of poke through here on the thumb. So in order to fix that, I'm also going to go over into the modify panel, conform and calculate collision. And just like that, okay, we fix up the uh, collisions on the thumb. Now for these uh, metallic studs, we're going to want to go into our materials pane. Okay, so we go into the materials pane, and if we look at the studs, okay, we're going to see a couple of things, all right? And this is a very, very important thing, and that is that we are, uh, these studs are getting their color from this diffuse color on the material settings. We don't want that. We want to use a texture. So what I'm going to do here is actually change the diffuse color to white, okay? Pure white, okay? And to give this thing some color, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just copy this roughness map and paste it into the base color, okay? And now I can go ahead and adjust the color of this texture. And just to give you a sense, right, I can make it red, I can make it blue by uh, changing the color balance. And I can also make it brighter, darker, or whatever I like. I think I'm going to use a value of approximately minus 20 for the brightness. And that will be the color for the studs. Now I'm going to go over to the metallic. And since these are supposed to be metallic in Character Creator 4, black means something that is non-metallic and plasticky. And white will make something very metallic. Okay, uh, A metal will be perfectly white. Roughness, of course, will determine how reflective that metal is. And currently, it is not very reflective at all. So I'm going to drag down the brightness on the roughness, okay, until I get a nice, shiny look, okay? And there we have it. Now, if I go over into the glove, you'll see that I have a base color uh, that's available to me, okay? I've got the metallic, and I've got the roughness. I want to make sure that the diffuse color, again, is perfectly white and now things are actually looking pretty good all right because when we uh, begin to um, optimize the gloves we want to make sure that there are uh, that there is a texture in each of the slots that we are eventually going to um, uh, bake okay so let's go ahead and do that all right. As you can see right here, okay, we've got the uh, the gloves are currently set to be nineteen thousand four hundred and thirty eight triangles. That is a hell of a lot of triangles for a pair of gloves. So um, here in Character Creator Four, it ships with an implementation of the Insta LOD framework, and so we're going to use that in order to uh, make our gloves a hell of a lot smaller. So I'm going to go down and we're going to do a polygon reduction on the object, okay? And what I'm gonna do is uh, set the face count. We're gonna leave the face count to around 5,000, okay? So uh, we should hopefully be reducing this from 19,438 down to around 5,000. And very importantly, we're going to bake the texture of this object. And we're gonna bake it down to 2048, okay? Um, because the uh, original, uh, um, textures that we imported for the glove are actually 2048. So we're going to keep them for the moment uh, because trust me, we're, we're going to, this is not the last time we're going to be doing uh, optimization on textures. So uh, with that said, just keep an eye on here, right? We have uh, so far 209,599 triangles for this entire character. That is pretty heavy. That's not what you want to bring into Unreal Engine. Okay. Um, 
Now, you may object and say, hey, I know that Lara Croft, her hair was something like 150,000 polygons. And that's great because, uh, you know, if you're crystal dynamics and you've got, you know, 10 people working uh, purely on optimization of your engine, then, hey, by all means, do that. Uh, If you're a solo dev and, uh, you know, you don't have those kind of resources to pour into optimization, you are absolutely going to want to make sure that you are using sort of the, uh, the lowest poly or triangle count possible uh in order to uh to get your game running at a nice stable uh 60 frames per second since that is of course very much the standard these days um it's all right so uh that said rant over let's go ahead click on apply and let character creator do its magic i'm going to hit pause because this is not an instantaneous procedure depending on your system's memory and the amount of vram in your graphics card this could take a minute this could take 10 minutes uh hopefully it's going to be about a minute for me but i am going to hit pause and see you on the flip side of this polygon reduction operation Okay, so uh, Character Creator has finished crunching things. It has uh, made those gloves a hell of a lot smaller. So we now have 4,998 polygons. Um, and if I close this, and we can now see that the glove has got uh, is retaining a whole lot of detail. We do have a little glitch here uh, down between the fingers. I am... Uh, I think I'm not going to worry about that too much since that is not a part of the character that I am ever going to look at. Um, That said, uh, I do want to go over to the modify panel. Okay. Uh, I am going to go into uh, conform and I want to make sure that I calculate the collision for the gloves. Okay. Just to make sure that it is uh, all set up and working correctly. All right. So there we go. All right. So there's our gloves. Let's do the same thing now with the uh, uh, with the shirt. Okay. We got a little extra work to do on the shirt. Okay. First thing that I'm going to do, because you'll see we've got lots of metal objects here. We've got the buckle. We've got the eyelets, 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 more eyelets, tons of eyelets. And guess what? They're all the same material. So what I'm going to do here is actually uh, go ahead and with all of those materials selected, I'm going to go ahead and consolidate the material. And I'm going to select the buckle material as sort of the main one. So I'm going to click on OK. And as you can see, all of those objects are now being assigned the buckle material. I'm going to go ahead and rename this. I'm just going to call it metal. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing that I just did before. I'm going to copy this roughness map, paste it into the base color. Okay. Then I'm going to edit, adjust the color. I'm going to turn the brightness down minus 20. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and boost up the metallic. Okay. So we're going to make that a metal by making that texture white. Okay. And then I'm going to begin bringing down the roughness. Okay, the brightness on the roughness until I get a nice reflective metal, okay, on those studs and buckles and everything else. Now, since I'm not trying to make a, uh, you know, a, 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 you know a, kind of a, a naughty game here, um, I also need to deal with the uh, opacity on the dress, okay? Uh, it is a little see-through here on the left um, so what I'm going to do is uh, select the top, and here on the top, you can see that we've got this opacity map. And the opacity map, anywhere that it's black, it's going to be sort of semi-transparent, right? Um, and so that's what's giving me that uh, little poke through there on the uh, on the top. So in order to fix that, um, or not necessarily fix, but adjust it, I'm going to go in and I'm going to adjust the contrast, okay? as well as the brightness okay and by doing that i can basically make it uh considerably less uh transparent okay so that uh hopefully i will no longer fall afoul of the esrb all right without really uh doing very much to uh you know destroy the game okay so all right, um, but as we can see, we've also we've got this opacity map right here. 
Um, we've got a base color, opacity, metallic, and roughness. Okay. So one thing that I'm going to want to do is actually go in and make sure that all of these materials have the same maps. So I'm going to copy this uh, metallic map because I know it's pure white, and I'm going to apply that to the uh, uh, sorry to the uh, uh, buckles here and the uh, the metal. All right, and the reason that I'm doing that is so that the uh, opacity map will bake correctly when we run the polygon reduction. All right. Another thing I want to do is go through all of these and make sure that my diffuse color okay is pure white okay and so again we could just click on that like so um for the metal the laces okay same thing i to make sure that it's white okay for the skirt make sure it's white okay for the trim make sure it's white and the reason that we're doing this is because basically when you do that polygon reduction any information from the diffuse color channel of the material settings is just going to get thrown out uh and so uh you're if you use those diffuse colors you're not going to get the result that you are expecting uh and that's why you should always be setting that stuff basically to white And if you want to make adjustments, you can then do your adjustments using the base color. Okay. So uh, that said, we are now pretty good uh, good to go here. We've fixed up a little bit of the opacity on the top. We've got our metals looking good. We have adjusted our diffuse color, and we've made sure that we have the same maps available on each of these objects. Pretty cool. All right. So that said, let's go ahead. Let's see what we can uh, get away with. All right, so I'm going to go in with this uh, this dress. So I'm going to go ahead, do the polygon reduction on the object. Let's keep it at 5,000 just to see what happens because we're already at 54,705. I'm going to go ahead and bake that texture once again to 2048. Let's click on apply and see what happens. So here we have it. We have basically uh, reduced this by 10 times. We've gone from uh, 54,000 uh, triangles to 4,099. Let's see what it looks like when we uh, actually click off this. And that is, to be honest, looking pretty accurate, okay? Uh, we got our materials all set up. We got all of our metal is looking correct. Um, that is a pretty nice result. Um, so I'm going to go ahead into the dress, and I am simply going to uh, make sure that we are calculating the collision. Everything is looking pretty good there. And uh, now it is time to move on to the pants. There's a little weirdness here in the crotch. Uh, I am... Once again, it is sort of an area that you are not really going to see. Uh, if you wanted to go, uh, go in. You could go in with the Edit Mesh tool, go into your Sculpting. Maybe use the Smooth tool a bit uh, right up there in the front to kind of, you know, even out some of those vertices, okay? Okay, maybe up there a little bit. Okay, try to relax and get and look um, looking a little nicer. But again, this is a part of the character that is almost always going to be in motion, and uh, it's not particularly something that I'm overly concerned about. Okay, it's not something that we're actually going to see very frequently in the uh, in the game. Um, okay, doke. Last up, the uh, the pants got the same issue obviously over in the materials okay because we got eyelids we got studs we got the spike rings all of those are metallic okay so i'm going to go ahead consolidate those materials let's consolidate them to i don't know the spike rings doesn't make any difference uh go ahead i'm going to uh copy that roughness map oops no i didn't mean to do that sorry let me undo that copy the roughness map paste it back into the base color Go in and adjust that color. We're going to make that minus 20. Okay. And we're also going to make sure that our diffuse color is set to white. 
Okay, and here we go. Now we go into our metallic. We adjust the color there. Make sure that it is, in fact, metallic by making it white. Go into our roughness, adjust that color, and make everything nice and shiny. Okay, and we can do our best to sort of match, you know, what we got on these other studs. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um... Okay, let's take a look at the materials in these other. We got uh, base color, etc. Okay, so that's looking nice. Make sure for all of these other materials that we're basically just pure white. And we are. Okay, these have all come in as pure white. And we're in business, okay. And so again, what we're gonna do is basically uh, try to consolidate these. The, here we have 90,216 polygons. Let's see what happens. Let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a polygon reduction. And this time I'm gonna boost that up. I'm gonna set that to around 10,000, okay? But we're also gonna bake that texture, 2048. Click on apply. Let's see what we get. Okay, so here we got our pants. As we can see, they're down to around 10,000 polygons, and they're looking more or less the way they did when we exported them. So looking pretty good. Now, I am concerned about the uh, calculating collision. Um, sometimes on pants, this can result in some freakiness going on. But uh, no, in fact, that looks pretty, pretty awesome. All right, now, one thing I do want to do, however... Uh, I'm just going to turn the pants off for a second. You can see that we've got the legs down here, right? And if I turn off the uh, those boots, okay, we got parts of the foot. Now, we are missing parts of the foot, but all of these are polygons that we can't actually see, okay? Um, so if I was going to use the character as uh, as is right now, I would go into Face, okay? Edit Mesh, Face, Ignore Back Faces, Okay, and with the character uh, selected, I go in here, I'll just basically go up as far as those uh, pants go up, click on hide, okay, and we'd basically get rid of all of those polygons uh, because I don't need them and I don't really want to deal with any sort of poke through that could theoretically happen uh, as a result of uh, animation or something like that, right? So there we go. We got our character We're looking pretty good. Um, I did want some glasses. And like I said, I've got uh, some relatively inexpensive uh, glasses here. Inexpensive from a uh, polygon and material standpoint. This is it. Glasses, big rim, plastic and metal. And again, these are kind of ugly. <laughs> these are these are not my, my favorite here. Um, but they, uh, they should actually do the trick, right? So I'm going to go with the uh, uh, plastic glasses here. I'm going to add these to the character. Okay, in just a second, they come in. Do need to be adjusted a bit, once again, because the proportions are not exactly correct. So I'm going to uh, just move them into position like so. Make sure they're not on the... Uh, the frame, I'm going to adjust the scaling a bit here, so they're too long. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the length. Okay, they're also, again, I like them to be a bit thinner than, uh, than what we were seeing just there. And again, let me just squeeze that down until they're on place correctly on the side of her head, and that is looking pretty good. Um, and now you've got kind of a difficult choice to make. I absolutely hate this glass material. Um, so one thing that I, uh, very often do, uh, with the glasses like this, okay, that come in and, I don't know, I don't think they look particularly nice. I'm going to go in and with these glasses selected, go into the glass material. I can change the, uh, I can adjust the color. I can adjust the uh, the brightness on those, but that doesn't really do too much, okay? 
Uh, so what I am going to do instead, I might just go ahead and make these invisible. And the way that I will make them invisible is by going into this. Uh, let me just grab this displacement and I'm going to go ahead and paste that into the opacity channel on the glasses and I can basically make them invisible like so, right? More or less. Now, since I now am using uh, an opacity map, I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to paste that for the glasses, but obviously I don't want those to be invisible. So I'm going to make them that one perfectly white. Okay. Um, the polygons for here are not outrageous, uh, 8,690, but I don't like having two materials for it. Your mileage on this uh, may certainly vary. I, however, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, polygon reduction. All right. So uh, this time, though, I'm going to go into polygon reduction and I'm going to use the recommended settings and I'm going to bake those textures to 2048. Okay. So I'm going to click on apply and cross my fingers, hope for the best. And I think that we should get a pretty nice result. Okay. And so it's finished crunching. Let's take a look. Okay. And there we have it. All right, those are our glasses, and they're looking pretty good at only, how much? 6,951. All right, so not exactly a giant reduction, but they weren't particularly heavy to begin with. Uh, and so we're actually doing pretty good. We've got our entire character here in at 72,184 triangles, which is, uh, yeah, that's a pretty good place to be in. Now... I should mention that there's definitely one more thing that we could do, all right? Let's take a look at our uh, our character here, all right? Starting from the gloves, right? One material, pretty good. $49.98. Biker boots, one material. Callista dress, one material. Pants, one material. We've got the hair, has got two materials. But I got to say, it's not great to go messing around with the hair because if you do try to do some sort of polygon reduction on the hair, what will eventually happen is you will lose your physics maps and you'll have to uh, basically start painting uh, additional maps. And that's no fun, right? Uh, our eyeglass frames. Sorry, our eyeglasses. Oh, these are the original eyeglasses. <laughs> Let me get rid of those. Oops, little error there. Okay, let's get rid of that. And that gets rid of another 5,000, quite a few polygons. All right, so we're actually down to 67,604. Pretty good. And we got one material here on the glasses, which is strangely called sphere. I'm going to rename that to be glasses. All right. So that's one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, seven materials. And then we go into the base plus character and we got a whole lot of materials. Okay. Um, and materials are a problem. Okay. Because all of these materials have basically got multiple textures. All of those textures are probably 2048 or above. Uh, and that is basically going to take up a lot of video Ram on the graphics card of whoever is running your game. Okay. First of all, Second of all, every single frame, all of those textures need to be uh, referenced in what's called a draw call. And so uh, the more textures and stuff you have on your uh, on your character, the the worse the performance is going to be. And it's it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You know, um, so, I mean, you could absolutely export this character and probably still get your uh 60 frames per second as is okay um where things get a little dicey is if you've got you know if you're using kind of nice assets for your background and stuff with other materials in other parts of the 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 scene well or if you're running a lot of physics simulations or if you got particles going everywhere i mean my games are basically i, I would describe them as anime as fuck right uh, there's particles everywhere. I got, you know, nobody does anything without a trail of sparkles uh, flying off them. Um, 
And all of that stuff consumes your computer's resources. So the fewer the textures you have on the character, the better off you're ultimately going to be. Um, so I'm gonna save this project. Okay, and then I'm gonna save this project as entropy underscore GB, okay? Um, because GB stands for game base, okay? And so we're currently working with this uh, CC3 base plus uh, model for the character, okay? But if I go into the modify panel, all right, you'll see that we also have this option to convert this character to game base. And what this is gonna do is it's going to uh, basically do what we've been doing with this polygon reduction, but it's gonna do it for the character. All right, and so what will happen is uh, the uh, topology, the the actual surfaces uh, will be simplified, okay? But we will also be baking textures that keep as much of the detail as possible, all right? Um, <clears throat> but we will actually end up with only one texture for the character instead of all of these textures, right? Because that's a that's a lot, and they're very high resolution as well. So, uh, back there, modify panel. Let's convert to game base. We're gonna do it as a single material, and for the max texture size, I'm gonna go for 4096. All right, I could go lower. Uh, I could go to 2048, and still probably have something that looks decent. But I am going to go 4096 because I think that it's worth it to have the uh, the character looking good. What I don't want to do is use multiple materials since that will kind of defeat the purpose. All right. So uh, with that set, single material, 4096, let's hit convert, and we will see what happens. Okay. The function will remove all the hidden meshes, so I'm going to have to rehide the legs Okay, uh, when I switch to game base. But, uh, but let's take a look. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the uh, body skin weights and mesh penetration could become a problem um, because we're changing the topography. Uh, so we will have to do a little bit of additional work in order to make game base work. All right. But let's take a look and see whether it is worthwhile. Okay. So the texture baking is coming to an end i think what i want you to do though is uh you know take a look at the character now as it exists and uh, bear in mind that when the next time we see this character okay it is going to be that's it that is <laughs> the game base character okay it just changed all right and as you can see it's pretty close it is very, very close to uh, what we actually started with, okay? Um, and yet, look at our project triangles have gone down to 49,672. If I look at the character and the materials, okay, we're down to uh, uh, very, very few, okay? So we have got, uh, we are doing very good in terms of our uh, texture uh, budget here, okay? Um, one thing we might do uh, in order to sort of uh, uh, even, you know, sort of compress this further would be to go into our content. Um, I believe it's under actor. You can actually go in and swap out the eyes, okay? And if you go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that there are game eyes that are available, um, okay? And that would uh, give you a, a, an even lower poly count and also fewer textures. Um, likewise with teeth, okay? You can also go down and there are game teeth uh, that are available as well. Okay, one that only has one UV, which means one set of textures for the teeth and for the gums. Um, I'm actually going to keep things as is. Uh, this is this to me is a pretty well optimized model, um, and it's going to look relatively good in the close-ups because of the textures that we have kept. Uh, and on the whole, 
we're looking very, very nice. And so uh, uh, with that, I would suggest to you that you can move on to a, uh, a video that I actually uh, I posted earlier, which takes this model um, and uh, does the export from here and brings it all the way over into Unreal Engine. Okay, and so uh, that video has already been posted. Uh, sorry, things got a little bit out of order. Um, but there you have it. I, uh, I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you find it useful, please like and subscribe. And uh, otherwise, I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.